Hey everyone, I'm Jack. Today it's time for me to do my September reading wrap up. September was a really good month for reading for me. I read 18 books in total, comprising just two different genres that is, science fiction very heavily and fantasy to a smaller degree but still very important. And without further delay, I'll get started talking about the books because this video is going to be long regardless of what I do. So, the first book that I read was Palam by L.L. McNeil. Now, I read the first book in this world, which is called The World of Lenaria, last year, and that is called Maroda. I did a separate review of that first book, which I will link in the description box below. I really enjoyed Maroda last year. It was actually one of my uh, favourite books of last year. It's extremely fun, well-paced, and just enjoyable. This is very much the same. It's continuing on with this greater storyline, of which there will be six books in total, which I am really looking forward to. And I don't want to say too much in a video about this. I will be doing a written review of this, which I'm working on as of this moment. I'm not sure if I'm doing a video review, however, same as some of the other books I'm going to talk about. I would like to do video reviews of things, but I'm kind of behind on video thank you at the moment. So I'll see. There'll definitely be a written review of it. This is a fantasy um, novel following a diverse cast of characters. In the first novel, they come together to do certain actions and the books involve dragons as well um, and in this second book they are scattered a little bit more due to reasons from the first book I'm not going to say too much more because of uh, spoilers of course but the characters are all well developed it's still fun it's a little bit darker in moments than the first book although the first book does have some remarkably dark moments as well as these books do and overall again like my word it was extremely well written fun, enjoyable, has its dark moments, has its light moments and it's just really well worth reading especially if you read Mura Oda and enjoyed it this is just more the same, another good solid fantasy book which I would greatly recommend The second thing that I read was The Lucky Stroy by Kim Stanley Robinson Now this is a very short little novel or book I should say because it's not just a single novel this has got one short story in it it's got two other things. It's got one essay by Kim Stanley Robinson, plus he's got an, a written interview that he did as well. And the interview does link to the short uh, story, which is called The Lucky Strike. The Lucky Strike is an alternative history sort of what if idea based on what if the Enola guy, which is obviously responsible for dropping the atomic bomb in Japan in World War II, you know, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Well, if that hadn't uh, uh, been the plane that dropped the bomb, what about if it had been a different plane? And what about if it hadn't have actually dropped it on target? What would have happened? You know, what would the results be? He discusses that both in the short story with a cast of um, characters that are obviously based on real life ones from the, you know, the guy, but also in the essay he explains it and explores it in an alternative way and explores the ideas of uh, alternative timelines. It's a curious little book, but I'm really glad that I read it because I've been wanting to read something a little bit different from the uh, Kim Stanley Robinson's norm normally heavily intensively researched science fiction books. And this is just that. This is a different um, type of book. It's still just as heavily researched, you can tell that, but it's not science fiction in the same way. So I'm really quite happy that I read this and I would recommend it if you want something for the same reason I did, you know, something from Robinson that's not his usual meteor, more intensive science fiction than this is the book for you. The third thing that I read was Science Fusion 2016, I'm probably pronouncing that horribly incorrectly. The three authors that make up the three short stories within this, it's only very, very small, are Topi Hirotaka, Tok Enjo and Toyo Fuji. Now Toyo Fuji I met at the Worldcon and indeed he actually signed his short story in this. This is an interesting little mix of three short stories. They all have a vaguely similar feel to them in some ways. I mean that's why it's been put together in this collection. They're all Japanese authors. I liked uh, Toyo Fuji's. Tok Enjo's was strange and Toby Hirotaka's was stranger again so basically they start off very strange and they get slightly more normal 
by, by, by my um, use of the word anyway, you know, they're a bit more sort of what I'm used to. The stuff very unusual for me and get be and get not better, just different and more familiar. Which is not a bad thing, but it's not a good thing, it's just different this little collection is. You got some interesting ideas, different ways of writing that I am not entirely used to. And I'm glad that I read it and indeed I'm glad that I got it from America because this was a curious little collection of which if you can get hold of it, I'm not sure how mainstream it is, then I would recommend reading it because it's a curious collection of rather different science fiction stories with some rather different ways of looking at the world and looking at writing in general. The focus is not on what you think it is going to be, especially for the Western world. It's not entirely the same. So it's really was quite good actually. Next up I read Gods, Monsters and the Lucky Pitch by Kelly Robson. This is a science fiction novel. This is a novel where the world is being devastated after climate uh, change. The governments of the world, some of them want to try to improve the world and try to spend money on um, recovery. Some of them don't. There is a form of time travel that exists and some of them want to basically go back and do things in the past to alter the future. But what would that entail and what would that affect entirely? It's a strange novel with some pretty strange ideas. The characters are rather unusual because they are humanity but in the future that, that's been altered let's say to match their environment. The main character is very strange indeed considering um, she doesn't really, actually have traditional legs anymore. She's got essentially sort of like tentacle legs. Sounds strange and it is but it works in the context of this novel. And I liked it, it was very strange, the con the concept was, personally, although not as strange as other books I've read, I mean it's still fairly understandable for me, and the characters were unusual, but again, kind of understandable, and overall I did actually really thoroughly enjoy this book, it was strange, like I said, but well worth reading, and it's got some interesting ideas, some good writing, the pacing is extremely good. I thought the ending was a little bit more abrupt than what I would have liked, maybe, but it's, that's not a major problem really. It's only a short novel, so if, if you do read it, it shouldn't take you an excessively long time to get through it, so you should be able to go through it, and considering the pacing is good, you should be able to get through it at a reasonable speed without a major problem. It doesn't use any extremely complex language as well, and overall I would recommend this, and uh, I will link um, Rachel's review of this Kalanadis in the description box below because she did a really good review of this. So I'm not going to bother reviewing it, I'll just go and watch her review if you're particularly interested because she did a brilliant review. Obviously, it's Rachel. Next up, I read Under the Pendulum Sun by Catherine Ing. Now, this is a fantasy novel. This is a little bit different for me to read because, I've, obviously, as you may know from my normal videos, I normally read a very large amount of science fiction with some fantasy and some other genres thrown in and the fantasy that I read is not normally this because this is a sort of gothic themed uh, fantasy which for me is extremely rare I haven't actually read anything sort of gothic themed in about three years I think so it is rare but I thoroughly enjoy this immensely and I'm really glad that I read it because it's got a very strange feel to it which I'm not used to I think because of that I think I loved it even more than I would have done because I'm, I wasn't expecting well, anything from it because I didn't know what to expect. So this worked out extremely well. The main character is a woman called Catherine. Her brother, um, Lion, has gone missing in this dark continent. The dark continent is not Africa. It is essentially a sort of fairy sort of fake kingdom. He's gone missing over there. She goes over after him to find him. She ends up at this big old mansion as a guest of a particular person who indeed, you know, there's weird sort of things going on in this house. It's sort of magical, half magical, half real. It's very strange, surreal. Um, she's not entirely sure what's going on within the house or indeed the other people that she meets in the house. And it's a very strange mixture of 
uh, like the what, Fae World and Real World. But I think it worked really well. I really did enjoy this book overall. It's, it was very different for me to read, like I said. And I think that, that was just it's one of those situations where it's just the right book at the right time. Which for me was something a little bit different at the right time. So this worked out extremely well. It's a good writing, pacing was interesting. The characters were strange and unusual, but they worked perfectly well in this context because this is a strange and surreal world. And it works well. It makes you wonder what's going to happen next because you can never entirely guess. The world is strange and surreal and it's just hard to predict what's going to happen because the characters are doing things and it's like, hmm, what's going to happen? You cannot figure it out, at least I couldn't anyway, because I'm not used to this type of book, so it worked out extremely well for me overall. Then I read Born by Jeff Vandermeer. This is a science fiction book. The main character is a woman called Rachel. She discovers a life form in the ruins of this uh, city. The world is sort of ruined after various events have happened, you know, parts of it in ruin. This life form she brings back home. This strange life form that seems to be able to absorb virtually anything. She starts to get to know this life form because it starts to develop more than just simple life. It starts to develop an actual intelligence. And she starts to interact with it. Her uh, boyfriend, who is an interesting character by himself, and he's got some pretty interesting um, designs on both Born and on the wider world. He doesn't like Bourne, but he also thinks he might be able to use Bourne for certain reasons. The world itself is very strange. There's a giant animal, let's say. I'm not going to go into detail on it. In the world that is destroying large amounts of the world that is mutated. And it's really strange because it's a flying animal as well, which is odd. You know, an animal that shouldn't normally fly, can't fly. It's weird, wonderful. I liked it but I didn't love it because at times it, I wasn't sure where the plot was going and uh, Jeff Enderby doesn't make it entirely clear where he's taking it and for what reason. It just felt a bit too strange at times and whilst I do like strange books as you know, this the direction was lacking a little bit at times which I thought was a shame. You could have had more direction and the book would have been stronger but it's just one of those things. I still think it was a good book and I still would recommend it but keep your keep an open mind when you're reading it and don't expect anything truly revolutionary i don't think because it's different but not truly astonishing to me that's all. the next book that i read was the drowned world by jg ballard this is a fairly short novel i think it would actually be counted as a novella today this is an interesting book i was expecting it to be climate change science fiction and whilst it does indeed feature climate change and obviously it's science fiction that's not entirely the focus that I thought it was going to be this is about a small set of characters in a ruined version of London England in the future climate change has happened London is essentially uh, below sea level now because the sea level is massively higher by a very large margin you know, there's only bits of land here and then, you know, basically only the tall buildings are, st are still above the um, water. And, uh, which makes me think of uh, Kim Stanley Robinson and one of his novels that I recently read, you know, New York 2140, although in a different way. This is about a small selection of characters and their desire to stay in these abandoned hotels and these abandoned office buildings and whilst there are events happening around them that they can't control and never will be able to control it's it's something different because I was expecting it to be a different a focus and it wasn't the focus of a diff completely different area which threw me I don't mind that and I still enjoyed the book but just be aware that this is not the climate change science fiction that you might be expecting it certainly wasn't for me climate change Features, like I said, but it's not the primary purpose. This is something slightly alternative to that, which I think is actually an interesting idea and an interesting concept because you know, it makes you have to re uh, reassess what you are expecting from this novel. Because you expect one thing 
and then it's like, no, it's not quite. It's something slightly alternative, and then you have to reevaluate and sort of determine again what you want from this novel. And for me, it did work. Some people it might not. Barad is a, a solid writer, though, so overall, I would recommend something by him, whether it's this or whether it's something else. I don't know, but he's a good writer overall. I then read Autonomous by Anna Lee Newitz. Now this is a science fiction novel. On this front of the novel, it has the um, a little um, blurb that says Autonomous is to biotech and AI what Neuromancer was to the internet, and that was by Neil Stevenson. And actually, it's, I didn't realise uh, or notice that until after I finished reading the book, frankly. And I thought that was curious because whilst I was actually reading Autonomous, I actually did think of William Gibson while thinking of it. Not too heavily, I mean this is, you know, Anna Lee Newitz is not trying to clone Gibson's writing style or clone his ideas in any way. She's doing totally a different things. But there's something about this book that vaguely made me think of the way Gibson tries to imagine a future world that's, yes, very futuristic and advanced, but it's still linked to us in some ways. It's not totally alien. This is not like, you know, um, super advanced technology that's completely out, out of, you know, a science fiction television show. You know, this is not like a Star Trek type show. This is still something that is somewhat believable. And indeed, some of the technology is stuff that we are trying to develop now just more, more basic forms of it, this just develops it a lot more and adds like 50 years on to research basically. Um, it's an interesting novel set in 2144. You've got a uh, woman who is a anti-patent uh, scientist turned drug pirate. She basically breaks down drugs into their component molecules and things, essentially figures out how they're made. She then makes versions which are then massively cheaper Obviously she's making the law doing so because these drugs are all patented. Obviously that's why she's a sort of illegal uh, person for and you know, these agencies want her. There are two characters in this that are chasing her that want to find out where she is because there are some big companies that do not like the fact that she's obviously breaking their um, drugs and obviously selling them for like massively cheaper than they are. But the drug that she's particularly broken and currently distributed in this particular point of the novel is one that wasn't entirely fully tested and it had certain drawbacks that she didn't know about at the time and this presents some pretty significant problems for both her and the company involved and everybody frankly has got problems because of this drug and now things are spiraling out of control a little bit and people are trying to maintain the situations, maintain the status quo. It's an interesting book. Pacing is uh, really good, you know, it never lets up well. It's more of a sort of um, science fiction sort of thriller more than anything else personally. And I really did enjoy this overall. I thought it was very well written, well paced as I said, and just a solid science fiction book which I really did thoroughly enjoy. And I would highly recommend it. It does have some interesting concepts. And I think it might actually be quite a significant book in the future. I mean, it might not be the new mentor that says that, uh, that um, Stephen says that on the front, because frankly, those eras of uh, books becoming, you know, massively significant for the entire science fiction genre as a whole, or any other major genre, I don't think happen that often nowadays as much as they did, because it's, I think the, the genre is more established now. But I still think it's significant, though, regardless, and I still think it will affect things quite notably in the future, I would recommend it. Next up, I read The Lady Astronaut Geology by Mary Robinette Cole. This is comprised of The Calculating Stars and The Fated Sky. And just after I finished The Fated Sky, I think it was actually the day after, strangely enough, really strange timing, she actually announced on Twitter that she has done a deal with Tor, which is the publisher of these, that she will be writing three more books set within this world. Two of them will be released next year in 2019. One of them will definitely feature the main guide of this novel, The Lady Astronaut herself. The one in 2019, she hasn't said what that's going to be, but the fact that it's still set in the same universe and will still feature some of the same characters, I think one of the, no uh, the other no novels will feature some of the sort of 
relatively minor characters in these books, which I think is a very interesting idea. And I don't want to say which characters they are, but let's say they are very important to the story and will quite an interesting mixture for uh, content and debate, let's say, in what I don't want to go into. As far as these two novels goes, this is an alternative history Earth, where in the year uh, 1952, a giant meteor uh, hits the Earth, specifically hits Washington DC, wipes out obviously the political infrastructure of America and indeed the financial one as well because it devastates coastlines in America and around the world. And it's a new world order, so to speak, and, you know, from what the world now is. So the space program is affected, and the, there's one woman in particular. Um, she is already working for NASA um, before this happened, and this changes her life forever because this changes the way the space program is run, obviously, because you, know, you can't run out of um, Cape Canaveral anymore, you know, where NASA is traditionally based up because obviously that's been, you know, that's coastal, so it's been flooded, so you can't do that. So everything has to move, and it's not just physically and geographically, things have to move. Political situations have to move and develop, and the social structure of society has to change as well because. Some of the scientists are now having to be reassigned to do other work because of obviously the devastation left. And now, um, of course, and this is the 50s as well. So this is, of course, um, equality, or at least the dawning of equality of um, sexes and of deed of race, of which it deals with in a very interesting way. It's a very powerful um, geology. I may well do a uh, separate review of this geology in the uh, near future. I'm not going to say too much more now. But suffice to say, I thought this was an absolutely brilliant geology. In this book, these two books will be on my favourite books of the year, at the end of the year, for definite. I mean, uh, you know, there's no doubt they will be because they were brilliant, well written, well paced. The main character, or well, the main two characters, because it includes the husband as well, are brilliant, well developed, well thought out and their emotional uh, range and the way they interact with other characters and indeed all the other characters are just brilliantly well realised and brought to life and I thought these were fantastic simply. Then I read Sisters of the Revolution edited by Anne and Jeff Vandermeer. Now this, as you can tell by the fact it's edited by the Vandermeers, is a short story collection. The amount of authors in it are extremely high, they're all female authors, unsurprisingly considering you know, it's called Sisters of the Revolution. This is all speculative um, science fiction stories with a feminine and feminist edge to it. Some of them are highly sarcastic and don't take themselves too seriously, some of them are much deeper and far more serious, some of them are somewhere in between, some of them are more traditional, some of them aren't. This is an interesting mixture of stories. Most of them I actually greatly enjoyed and actually thought were extremely well written. There's a few, the same as any collection, where they were just a bit odd and I didn't understand what the author was trying to do with the story, so it didn't really have much impact on me at all. But on the most part, most of them actually did, whether it is they just made me sort of laugh because of how sarcastic about real life issues they were trying to be, or whether they were making a significant point, whether politically or in some other manner you know, about the political structure of the world. They're all good stories overall, even the ones that I didn't understand. They would probably definitely work for somebody. And I would really recommend this collection because it's an interesting collection. I will try and see what other collections now I'm going to find and can read because I really enjoyed this. And I would love to read some more um, similar-ish collections to see what else is out there. I then read The or Are You Are and The War with the Newts by Carol Cape. Now this is one of the science fiction masterworks, one of the yellow spines of which I have rather a lot of as you may know. This is a really old science fiction book by today's standard. This is almost 100 years old, it's like 97 years old or 98 years old at this point, so it's virtually a century old at this point. And 
this book is significant because the main story in it is to the, the RUR of the title, the, which stands for Rossum's Universal Robots, is credited as giving a certain Mr. Isaac Asimov his initial idea to write the robot books, which are obviously massively significant and affected a lot of things in their own time. This is what he credits himself. He actually, um, he actually known to say, made him think and gave him certain thoughts because in RUR, although um, it's a play, it's a curious one where it's the first ever written use of the word robot, which is extremely significant by itself. RUR, I really enjoyed it. It was relatively short by comparison, but I really enjoyed its strange play where you've got a kind of um, robot factory with the human owners making robots and the robots affect the world in a significant way because obviously labour um, and the way people do work is different. The second story, War with the Newts, I'm not going to saying too much of because I didn't like it at all. It was just strange, I didn't see the point of it and I thought honestly, frankly, this book, the focus of it was I or the War with the Newts was just thrown in to make it basically a bit more normal length because I or are by itself there would have been extremely short and it, you couldn't have really included it in the masterworks because it would have been too thin by itself, just one novel. So to me it's like they added War with the Newts just so they could make it into a, an, an actual normal length book, which yeah, it's fine, and I'm glad they did because Ver was brilliant. I really did enjoy it, and I'm really glad that I read it. I then read Orbital Cloud by Tayo Fuji. I actually met Tayo Fuji in America at the Vulcan, and indeed he signed this particular copy. Now, I'm not going to say too much on this book. I already mentioned it in a video uh, two weeks ago. And also, Rachel, a friend of mine, fellow booktuber, did a really good review of this, of which I would... Um, recommend you go watch and indeed I will link her review of this in the description box below because it's brilliant well obviously it is Rachel again but suffice to say this is a really interesting science fiction novel it is based around the idea of there's some orbiting um, debris or orbiting something in a sort of what appears to be a synchronous orbit around the earth the orbiting cloud of the title and this small weather company sort of notices it and wonders why it's there and what it's doing and who it belongs to. Is it just debris? It shouldn't be debris because obviously all debris is monitored because of course the amount of satellites in orbit is enormous now so everything has to be monitored because otherwise you could get satellites getting taken out all over the place and it would be extremely costly and massively disruptive to the way our world now works. This is near future science fiction, extremely well thought out, very well written, the characters in it are interesting and different from what I thought they would be going to be. I'm not going to go into why because I might give away spoilers as to who and what the characters do. But so to say, I would really recommend this book. It was extremely well written, great idea, and I am very glad that I read it. I really am because it was just a great novel overall. Um, I would recommend you and watch Rachel's video, but go watch the channel in general. Anyway. Next up, I read. The Rise and Fall of Dio Dio by Neil Stevenson and Nicole Galland. Now this is a science fiction book set in a world where magic once existed. In 1951 it definitely existed. Um, London hosted the Great Exhibition at the Crystal Palace and this was a turning point because after that date magic seemed to fade very quickly out of the world and we lost it forever. And Certain people um, in our time are trying to figure out why magic disappeared and where it went and want to get it back by going back there. It features time travel. Now the concept of this I was expecting to like uh, fully because this is sounded like it was going to be my kind of book but actually this is probably going to be one of one of the dullest books I've read this year, if not the dullest book I've read this year, because this was a horribly long and arduous slog to get through this book. Frankly, I nearly stopped uh, reading this book at several points, and actually, and I nearly, I nearly gave up on it, but I was already more than halfway through at that point by the time I decided that, 
And I thought, well, no, I'm not going to read it at uh, the end now and see actually what happens. And I, was like, I mean, I'm glad I did finish it, but it, it was not exactly the most exciting because, I don't know, the characters were put in, I mean, especially the one male character at the start of the book, he's frankly really unpleasant. I'm not going to say why, but I, I was hoping something horrible would happen to him, like he'd get his head chopped off or something. I'm not joking, man. I hated this one male character. He's, a, he's an awful character. And I didn't like reading about him, and he kind of ruined the book, frankly, because of that one character alone. I mean, in fact, actually, the book might have been good if it, if it had a different character over the name, one that wasn't as unpleasant, frankly, but fortunately, he was in the book. So it ruined the book for me. And it's just one of the situations where, because of a single character, the book was completely utterly destroyed. I can probably understand why this book would work for some people if that character doesn't annoy you to death it did with me though so it's just one of the situations where it's just one thing ruined a book oh well after Dio Dio I decided to pick up another SF Masterworks because I'd already read one so I just felt like reading another and the one I picked up was Non-Stop by Brian W. Aldis now Aldis is a well known and well respected um, science fiction author he's a classic science fiction author by today's standards he sadly died a few years ago I think it was actually last year, and now I'm finally reading one of his books. Non-Stop is an interesting, fairly short novel, where it is um, based around this small tribe called the Green Tribe, not because of the colour, because it happens to be a third name of the character, and this tribe lives in the uh, cramped area called Quarters, hacking away at this encroaching sort of plant life which they called Pollux and things are changing in their environment they're not sure why but one member of this tribe in particular uh, Roy Complain he discovers certain information out and he goes to explore himself and things happen and this changes his world and indeed the tribe's world in a very significant way I can't say too much because there is a fairly early um, few things that you would learn and I can't really say them that would spoil the whole book really badly but suffice to say it's interesting uh, ideas and concepts I am very glad that I read it I couldn't help smiling whilst I was reading it because some of the ideas and the way he's written certain things was frankly really good and I was very happy that I read this book overall and just glad that I picked it up on the spur of the moment and read it because it was well worth reading and just enjoyable. Obviously dark moments in it but interesting concepts and well written and yeah I'm definitely going to look into more by Aldis. I've got more by Aldis so that was kind of convenient. So the third from last book that I read in September was The Red Feds of Fortune by J.Y. Young. This is one of the novellas set in the Tensivit universe. Uh, the first one is the black something, it's got a colour in it, that's all I can remember. I keep getting the two titles um, mixed up, having colours in them is confusing personally. And I really enjoyed this novella. Now, this is following the uh, character from the other novella and it is extremely enjoyable and really well written. It is fairly short, as it is a novella after all, but fantastically well written and extremely to the point. It may be short, but uh, Yang gets to the point and gets to the heart of what um, they want to say extremely well. And uh, I just really enjoyed this novella. I think like, there is now a third novella in this world and there will be a fourth one next year in 2019, I believe. And I will definitely be looking into the third and looking forward to the fourth in time because these are a brilliantly realised world with fantastic characters, some alternative ideas on gender because this is the world where you don't choose your gender until you reach a certain age and then you can choose it for yourself. It's not sort of inflicted on you. You know, you don't have to live with the genre, uh, the gender that you are born. You can choose either way, which is a curious concept and one that I haven't actually come across ever before which frankly at this point is 
remarkable because it's about books of Vedas. I've come across most major concepts, but not this one. So it's an interesting one, and I would really recommend this one if you want something a little bit different, a little bit alternative on normal uh, fantasy. Because this does use none of the traditional tropes in any manner. This is something very new and very different, and it's refreshing. And I thought it's fantastic. The penultimate book that I read was To Like the Lightning by Ada Palmer. This is the second book in the Terra Ignota series. I have to look at the uh, name on, on the spine because I've actually forgotten the name of the series. This is a very strange and hard to get into and hard to understand science fiction world. This is a form of the world where our political system and our society in general is, is greatly different and this book is also one that I've been dreading talking about um, even when I first started it I was started dreading it because talking about it in a video like this is really difficult because it's very hard to understand it's very complex the language is difficult and hard to understand I mean I did get it in the end but it takes a long time to get into I enjoyed it Although I can't even say why I enjoyed it because it's, I'm still um, turning the ideas over in my head. Uh, Rachel, I believe, did a really good review of this, if I remember correctly, which I will link in the description box again um, below. But suffice to say, I am um, glad that I read this and I will be reading the second one, which is called Seven Surrenders, if I'm not mistaken, which I do actually have waiting. So I'm very happy that I read this and it's an interesting, I'll be hard to read science fiction novel and finally i read a natural history of dragons by marie brennan now this was a body read that i read with uh, andrea over uh, on her channel who i will link into the box below infinite text and i'm really glad that uh, i body read this with andrea because the certain things that I might have missed to do with references to locations that she picked up on. I think it may, may have worked both ways, I don't know. But I think overall we both got more out of this because we body read it together and we, just, we talked about it over the course of like five days. I think it was in the end that it took us to read it. And this was a really good book. And I read this at the same time as reading um, To Light the Lightning. And I think that combination of this, which is a more straightforward uh, fantasy novel that uses straightforward language, normal language. The plot, the plot is relatively straightforward. Cut as normal character development. To light the lightning is horribly dense, complex, and complicated. This isn't. So I think this, frankly, made To Light the Lightning brilliant and actually made it possible to read. I think I might have struggled with To Light the Lightning if I didn't have something else, um, a bit more standard a bit more sort of traditional alongside it to help sort of help relieve the pressure because it's a lot of writing was intense this was lighter more enjoyable the main character is a um young woman at the start of the novel she wants to be a uh scientist specifically focusing on dragons which are exist in this version of the world which is not entirely earth it's like an alternative earth where you know it's like you still got England and Scotland and Wales and things, but they're called different names. Again, Eastern Europe is which is where they go. It's still Eastern Europe, just different names, but still the same feel to it. It has dragons in it, so if you like dragons, then you will like this, I suspect, because this features them in a very interesting manner. This is the first in a five book series, and I will definitely be reading the other book. Actually, I want to get to them fairly soon. I don't have the other books, so, so I've got to go and buy them. Which is not a problem because, you know, I don't mind buying books because I'm trying not to buy too many at the moment. And overall, I really enjoyed this and it's not like something revolutionary, like in this area, it's not a well book, but it was well written and enjoyable and solidly done. Frankly, I would recommend it for that alone. And especially if you've got something a little bit heavier um, that you need to read and you're a bit wary about you know, getting into it like I did with To Light the Lightning, then this could be a good companion for it. Like, I mean, it certainly was for me. I'm really glad I read this. And indeed, I want to now do the same in the second novel. I'm going to get hold of the second 
um, book in this series and then read that at the same time as reading uh, Seven Surrenders by Ada Palmer and that should hopefully make that possible a bit more easier to go with as well. So with that said that's it for all of the books I read this month. I actually can't hold all of the books up in one go because I'll probably end up dropping them. I don't know how I'm going to do them now but I've managed them out. If you've read any of these or would like to then please leave a comment and we can have a discussion. If you have any book suggestions for me you know based on what I've read or indeed what I've mentioned in other video things you think I would like then please again leave a comment. I'm always eager and willing to try out new um, books and new authors and whole new subgenre that I may have somehow overlooked because obviously that does happen uh, without a major problem quite often in fact so I'm always happy for that. All the links to the people that I mentioned both Rachel and Andrea can be found in the description box below as well as links to Ra Ra uh, Rachel's videos of which there are several. She did brilliant reviews and with that said that is it for this video so thank you for watching and I'll see you another day. Bye for now.